Welcome to the Wine Zone. I'm Conrad Etchbeck and this is Pro and Con. My guest today is Vincenzo Abruzzese. Uh, Mr. Abruzzese is the owner and the winemaker of the Val di Cava brand of Brunello di Montalcino. Correct. Right? Good. Yeah. Thank you. And welcome. Yeah. Now, for many, for many wine lovers, Brunello di Montalcino is a wine that's very expensive and needs a long time to age in the cellar before drinking, at least 10 years. So is this a wine for rich, young collectors? No, this is a wine for uh, everyone that wants to enjoy. So if you want to enjoy a lot, you can drink uh, Brunello di Montalcino. And uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, Brunello is very famous. So was a myth wine in the past. Uh, when uh, our head, our chief, Bion Di Santi, invented the heat, he proposed like a Brunello that can age very long. Mm -hmm. But today, working uh, in a very uh, strong way in the vineyard, trying to uh, respect the balance of the nature, we are able to produce a great grape in balance that uh, will give us a great wine with great balance, with great elegance with great enjoyment. So Sangiovese, that's the grape that we use to produce Brunello, that's very delicate, it, but has also um, the power, the strength to give you great pleasure. Today Brunello uh, respect the tradition, respect the character of Montalcino, but give you more enjoyment, more balance. So Brunello has a, a lot of great wine. You can drink uh, immediately after two months or after 20 years. You will, have, you will have great pleasure to drink it. For our Yule, we have to sell after five years because uh, after a long period, Sangiovese uh, be able to be loyal to the character of the place. Mm -hmm. And so it's better to wait some year. But uh, when you find Brunello in the market, you will find a great wine to enjoy. Right. You can enjoy it today or you can uh, wait for 20, 30 years and you will have also the development of the time, the charm of the, this evolution. But Brunello is a great wine to enjoy. Now, to me, Brunello is not Brunello di Montalcino is not a single wine with a single style. You can age it in Slavonian Botti, or you can age it in French Bariques. Okay, and depending on the location of the vineyard, whether you're high up in the cooler hills or down lower in the, in the, in the hotter valleys, the lower slopes. It's true. And and the vineyards could be made up of limestone, or clay, or schist or volcanic soil, or even that crumbly marl that you call galestro. Correct. Okay. Perfecto. So, so, do you believe that in future, Brunello should be labeled with some indications of their subzones, so that people have a better idea of what style I see. to expect? Uh, Valdicava has um, a special strategy, a special philosophy. Uh, in my opinion, a great wine born in the vineyard, in the vineyard, in the vineyard, in the vineyard, in the vineyard. Yeah, now so, you're one of the few people so, that's a single so, vineyard. No, no, I want to say that uh, all the all happen in the nature, all happen outside, all happen in the country. Maybe easier to understand uh, the work in the cellar, maybe easier to visit uh, a wonderful cellar a beautiful hawk uh, uh, cask or a wonderful barrique or wonderful room to bottle the wine but the great quality born in the vineyard and this means that only if you will have a great quality in the grapes you will have a good wine at the hand in the vineyard happen the 95 percent of your quality mm -hmm. in the cellar five percent so the question is very interesting because if uh, all happen in the vineyard you can give uh, also an indication of different vineyard so to have uh, the possibility to understand the different character but it's also true that uh, in Montalcino 
uh, we are very young because uh, it's only 150 years that we produce a wine but uh, really there is only 50 years that for instance my family that was uh, one of the fondators of our team in Brunello only 50 years that we produce Brunello so in 50 years uh, it's not so easy to understand the real balance of the nature probably in the next 20 or 30 years with more awareness, with more knowledge, with more professional that can uh, give us uh, the different uh, indication about the different location, we will have the possibility to write the different part of Montalcino where you work. But till now uh, the difference depends on the location, on the vineyard, on the employer, on the winemaker, on the owner, on the producer, in a lot of things, not only in the place. Right. So that's, and so that's... Uh, we have to enjoy Brunello and for the future probably we will have a, a different indication. But now the indication is the different producer. So if you drink Biondi Santi or Valdicava or Angelo Gaia, you drink a different style that depends on the different location in Montalcino, but not only. Because Sangiovese is so sensitive that, for instance, my property, we are one of the last original family in Montalcino, one of the last familiar property with an important property. We have 133 hectares of property in Montalcino, and of these 25 hectares of uh, vineyards, only Sangiovese, only Brunello. Well, uh, we have uh, 10 different vineyards and uh, we produce 10 different Brunello at the beginning because as you say we can have galestro or clay or sand we have a different soil, different exposition towards the sun different age of the vineyard, uh, different density in a vineyard because in the old vineyards less density today in the younger vineyards more density so we have a lot of difference uh, that give a difference in the grape, dif different characteristic in the wine. Which you can blend. In the same, in the same property. Right. And we blend this characteristic in Valdicava Brunello, in our primary wine, so to balance the fruit aroma of one vineyard with the power of another vineyard, the strength of a vineyard with the length of another, so to have a great Brunello to enjoy or to age. But in the same property, I want to say that in the same property, we have different character in Sangiovese. Because the Caesar of Sangiovese, they are very open in the color, in the body, in the aroma, that you have a very important difference also in the same property. Mm -hmm. Even if we have only one property in the same location of Montalcino, we can produce different Brunello if you want. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, we have to consider the brand. Valdicava, for instance, it's a Brunello that has this character of uh, animal, of fruit, of balance. This is our style. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the last 20 years is our style. In the next 10 years will be the same style. And when you drink Valdicava, you drink this kind of Brunello, this kind of expression of Montalcino that depends on the location, but as I told you also in the producer and the winemaker and a lot of things. Right, right. So, you've answered my next question. Um, this is a blend from all the different parts of your wine or vineyards. Exactly. You'll have another one. This is, this is the the general Brunello di Montalcino from Val di Cava. You also have one called Madonna del Piano. Exactly. Right? And that's just a single part of yes. one of your vineyards. Um, and what kind you, of soil do you have there? You know that uh, Biondi Santi invented Brunello in 1888. Yes. And for eight years he was the only wine producer in Montalcino. And he liked to mix different grapes of Sangiovese of his property and other property. And other properties. Yeah, Correct. From all so to balance region. fruit, uh, power and so on. My grandfather <laughs> started to produce Brunello in 1967 and after 10 years had a different idea. He had the idea to vinify separately the different single vineyard and uh, to mix the wine only later. So Valdicava 
Brunello is the expression of our estate. I it's see. the I'm expression of our Brunello, of right. our property. Madonna del Piano, it's the Brunello of a single vineyard. So let me just clarify. So previously, Biondi Santi was taking the grapes from everywhere, but fermenting them together, co-fermenting them. Correct. Okay, all at once, and not little logs we and say then blended. We uvaggio, that means a blend of grapes. Just a blend of grapes. Correct. Uvaggio. When uh, we say assemblage, assemblage means you make them means separately uh, and then you blend them at the end. Exactly. Fantastic. In this way, my grandfather discovered that in Madonna del Piano, we had and we have a special character that born only in Madonna del Piano single vineyard. Yeah. And for the first time in 1977, he produced a single vineyard in Montalcino with a, a great revolution at the beginning, because he had the idea to vinify separately the different single vineyard. And Madonna del Piano was produced in 1977, and then 85, 88, 90, 93, 94, 95, and uh, not in 94, but in 94, the government gave us officially the authorization to produce a single vineyard. They changed the rule in Montalcino for the example of this single vineyard, Madonna del Piano, that was the first single vineyard produced in Montalcino. Fantastic, fantastic. And now, recently you've made it every year except 2002. Yes, uh, every year when we are sure to be able to respect the character of Madonna del Piano. So in the last period, 01, not 2000, but 2001, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, no 2008, no and we will produce 2009, 2010, no 11, and 2012. So, only when we have the perfect condition to produce a wine from a single vineyard. Valdicava is easier because we have the possibility to balance the different character or right. different location. Right. And so also if the weather is different, we will have some uh, vineyard that like this different weather and so on. Even so, this is, this is your most recent release. Yes. The Brunello, it's a 2006. So it's already six, almost seven years old. Yes. And it's gonna be available in vintages, in, in sorry, in the Vintages Classics catalog. Correct. For $125 a bottle. That is a, wow. a wonderful price <laughs> for this value. A, a very inexpensive price. So, for how much is both? So, how much is the Madonna del Piano? The piano? Um, cost twice as much? No, it uh, costs uh, some, some more, yeah. but give you also a special, mm -hmm. special pleasure if you like the aroma of our Madonna del Piano. Well, I love this because, one. Uh, I love this one. <laughs> grazie. We produce. Uh, the wine for the place and we are so lucky that people like our aroma but our mission is to respect the place to respect the nature to to work in balance with the nature what gives it the ageability is it the acidity acidity is the balance yeah. that give you a possibility to age mm -hmm. if you are in balance you will live longer Right. And the same as uh, the wine. If uh, all the elements of the wine are in balance, acidity, tannin, antoshani, all the components of the wine, you will have a longer life. Right. And there is also this uh, magic situation of Sangiovese. Sangiovese is a special grape that gives you enjoyment when it's young and that give you enjoyment also when it's very, very old. Yes. yes. Um, uh, it's a special athlete, a special marathon. A marathon one. Yeah. Marathon. Marathon. We are in Toronto. <laughs> Yesterday we had the marathon, and the Sangiovese, it's the and marathon. Sangiovese won the marathon. Correct. Right. Now, um, last month the wine world was very sad to hear of the passing of Franco Biondi Santos. Yes. He was... Um, he was the best known producer in the region and undoubtedly the international poster boy for Brunello di Montalcino. So who's going to take up the challenge now of carrying the message of Brunello to the world? Um, I have to say uh, only two things about Franco. Uh, Franco was born 1922 and uh, he remained a great producer uh, till one month ago. Eh? So, um, Franco lives in Siena uh, during the night because uh, he has a home in Siena, me too. 
and sometimes in the morning we go together to Montalcino with different car and uh, if it's in front of me I stop to drive because he drives too fast. <laughs> so a special, uh, a special uh, uh, guy. Um, his father, uh, Tancredi Biondi Santi, probably was the one that uh, gave the difference to Montalcino. And uh, Franco continued the work of Tancredi, trying to respect uh, his idea, but the uh, genius uh, was uh, Tancredi who discovered uh, this uh, special character that we have uh, in, uh, in Montalcino, where we have a great difference in temperature between the day and the night, where we have uh, wind uh, every afternoon, where it's easier to produce uh, quality in the vineyard, where it's easier to grow grapes. Well, I think that Franco now will be again uh, in another world to produce a great Sangiovese, together a, a friend of him and also a friend of mine because uh, I am a neighbor of Biondi Santi and uh, we had the same winemaker in the past, Giulio Gambelli, born in 1923 uh, or 24, I don't remember exactly, but uh, that was a great winemaker and so they will be now in the sky to produce a great wine waiting for us uh, when we will have the possibility to test this wine. And I say in this way because uh, he has a long life, he uh, has uh, also a wonderful family and uh, now we, we will have uh, Jacopo, uh, yeah. that is a friend of mine, to continue his work. And the son of uh, Jacopo that I like a lot, uh, the name is Tancredi. Thank so you. I hope that as soon as possible Jacopo will decide to give power to Tancredi so to come back to the uh, genius in Montalcino. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Thank you for being with me. Grazie. Thank you for, for your hospitality and I'm so happy to be here in this wonderful uh, city, Toronto. Probably one of the best of uh, America. I and, agree. Uh, I yes, agree. I like a lot <laughs> and I like also a lot the, the way to live here. Uh, you work a lot, uh, you do good business, a lot of money, but you are also able to, good wine. to enjoy a great <laughs> good Absolutely. wine. Bravi! Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. My guest has been Vincenzo Abruzzese from the house of Val di Cava in Brunello di Montalcino and that is, of course, in Tuscany, Italy. Join us again soon where we'll speak with another amazing wine professional right here on Pro & Con. Bye-bye. Grazie.